Greetings, I'm Barrent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are continuing our playthrough of The Ghosts Betwixt. Our characters were able to get through the first couple rooms. We're looking to find the door to the basement. We're still looking around for that. So what we're going to continue to do is move into our next exploration phase. Now, I do want to mention that this video is actually recorded back to back with the last one. So if there were any mistakes made in the last video, they would have to be corrected in the next video. I hope you can bear with me. Also, if you're looking for more information on this game, please check my description below. I have a link to Board Game Geek and I have a link to the website for this game itself. And also, up here in the corner, during the Kickstarter, I'm going to have a link. If you see that link, it must mean the Kickstarter is going on. Please feel free to check it out. We've got our big happy family, and do you think they're going to be able to make it to the door? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. As you can see, I've kind of rearranged things a little bit. This is the 2A that we were on before. I've kind of moved it down because I believe we're going to have a tile that's going to be coming up here when we go through this door. I haven't flipped over our map token yet. And the other tiles we can go back to, but once we reveal the map tile, and if we find anybody that we have to spawn, it does say in the rules that you actually can't go back past the tile you are on. So the only two you could actually venture in are right here. Of course, if there isn't anybody in any of these map tiles, you could return to other map tiles. So I just want you to be aware that that can happen. But for the case sake of filming here, I'm not going to go back this way very often, I don't think. So we're going to reveal our next map tile, and it is 1A. So apparently this is a two bathroom house. We have found another bathroom. So we're gonna put this bathroom right here. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab our next three fate tokens. Oh, that's four. We're gonna put this one back here. All right, here's our three fate tokens. We're gonna to reveal them one at a time. Our first one is, oh, it's our locked door. All right, fantastic. That's perfect. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our locked door right up here at the top of our screen. Now let's see what our next one is. Oh, if we don't find any monsters, we can go right to that thing. Oh, we found a bear trap. All right, we're gonna have to spawn the bear trap in that room. All right, let's see what our next one is. Oh, we found mountain stirs. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go check out what those that monster token is. So monster token three is two good old dark guard dogs. That kind of makes sense, they're guarding the door. So here's our guard dogs, we've seen them before. I'm gonna put them right there. And we're going to give each of them four health. So the top one is going to be up here. This is going to be dog number one. Dog number two is going to be right over here. He has four health as well. And we also have to draw a beastly monster weapon for each of these. So we're going to mix them up a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and draw one. All right. So we're going to draw this one for him and this one for him. Let's see what we got. Oh, okay. We got bad stuff. We, <laughs> we got, uh, oh, there's that jagged nail again. All right. So our top dog is going to have jagged nail. Our number two dog is going to have these snaggle tooth beastly. It's a hidden weapon. All right, it does one extra damage if it gets some of those uh, diamonds. Now this one also gets two extra damage if it gets two diamonds. So we don't want to get any diamonds. That's the plan. All right, next we need to see who they want to eat. All right, guard dog number one wants to eat Maddox. Oh, that's no good. Guard dog number two wants to eat Maddox. Oh no, they both want Maddox. <laughs> That's too bad for Maddox. So we're going to place our targeting tokens up here along with the dogs. And now we need to spawn them. We've got dog number one. We're going to roll a one, two, three, four. So that's a half an eight cider. Yes, I can do a little bit of math. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we go. One right here. I'm going to get this trap out of the way. We'll do him in a second. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that what it is? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yes, it is. A six cider. All right. I can count. Three. One, two, three. He's going to appear on this. Well, he can't appear on that. 
So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to have him appear right there. All right, our next one is going to appear on 8, which is way over here. And he's also going to appear 5. Okay, he's up here. And then our, oh, he's going to be facing us. He's not looking away from us. He, they're going to actually be facing Maddox. Maddox is their target. But basically, they're going to be looking straight down. Lastly, we've got our trap. So let's see where our trap is placed. It's placed on 1 and 4. So if somehow, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can get our dogs to go into that. That would be fantastic. I don't foresee that happening in any future turns, but maybe I might get creative. At this point, we can do some pre-fight actions. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually move with her up to here. Now, I know every time I've always either done a kind of a defensive action or an offensive action, but we're actually going to probably move some of these guys into position. Now, Joan already has one extra attacking die because she was able to kill somebody last round. And Evelyn has like a whole bunch of them. She's got two or more. She's going to move up one, two, three, four, five, up, no, I don't like that. We're just gonna move her one, two, three, four to here, I think. I think, oh, that's pretty bad too. Well, I'll figure out her in a second. Bill's actually gonna move one, two, up to here. The reason I'm doing that, if I can put a line in front of these dogs, they can't get to Maddox, and they will actually attack somebody else as they're trying to get to Maddox. I think that's gonna be our best plan. Now, the other people I wanna have move is gonna be Evelyn, she's gonna move up a little bit, and I think we're also gonna have Maddox move up a little bit. No, I think Maddox is gonna take an attack die. So he's gonna go ahead and move his marker up one. And now that we've performed our pre-fight actions, it's gonna be our turn. And we're gonna go ahead with Joan first. And guess what she's gonna do? She's gonna hit this dog. I've got a plan. I hope it comes to fruition. We're gonna hit our dog with our baseball bat. So Joan is gonna gain a light green, a green, another light green, and she's also gonna gain a dark yellow die. All right, this is what we're gonna do in order to take out this dog. Now don't forget, our dog does get a brown tan die. Not a brown die, I lied, a tan defense die. All right, let's see how Joan does. Come on, Joan. Yes, I think Joan did exactly what I needed her to do. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and look at our dice. This die did nothing, we'll put it over here. But these dice, these are the big ones. So Joan has a baseball bat. First off, we need to check to see if we hit the agility of the guard dog. The guard dog's agility is one. So we hit, congratulations, our die paid off. Next, we need to see how much damage we do. We did three, minus one from the defense is we've done two damage. All right, fantastic, two damage. Now we have this. We can choose to use either damage one or stumble one. So we can give it another damage, making it three, or we can do stumble one. We're gonna do stumble one and I'll show you why. So we're gonna go ahead and do two damage to this dog and we're gonna make it stumble one. So when I hit a monster and do stumble to this monster, I can move it back one or I can move it adjacent, whatever I choose to do. Well, you'll never guess where I plan to put it. Yep, you're right, <laughs> into the bear trap. So it's gonna trigger the bear trap because I made it stumble into the bear trap. And a bear trap does one damage, so he takes one and he gains bleed two. Now what does bleed do? Bleed states that at the end of the activation for whatever has the bleed token, it's going to take one damage. You're right. You're going to guess the fate of this dog real soon. He's going to run up and he's going to hit, try to hit somebody. He's going to die. Oh, poor dog. Now it's time to activate our dogs. Now, of course, I did my very best to make this great wall and I totally failed. <laughs> I totally forgot when they move, they can actually move through people. So sadly, Maddox is about to get smashed. I should have actually probably moved him back, but I didn't. So these dogs are going to try to go ahead and get to Maddox. Now they've got a six speed, if you see right up here. So they're gonna to try to get to Maddox. He's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. He has to move it, gain an extra speed to get through. Six, that dog gets to Maddox and he's gonna go ahead and attack him with his jagged nail. So our dog is gonna get a light blue and a light yellow die. And then we get a tan die for Maddox. So we're gonna, oh, he also gets a green die, yuck, for his jagged nail. I forgot about that, barf. All right, <laughs> here we go, let's roll these up. So we're gonna roll up our dice and hope this dog doesn't do too good. Oh, this dog did terrible. Oh, you're a fantastic dog, good dog. All right, so if we look at our dice, our tan die didn't do anything. But we didn't get any stars, so without any stars, we don't actually hit. Well, you can't have weapon effects happen if you don't actually hit. And not to mention, he would've done two damage, that's bad news. And now that that dog activated, he's actually gonna die because of his bleed. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all of this from this dog. He's deader than a doornail. We're gonna put our card back up here. And 
here's my question. I'm not sure where this would go. In the rules, when the game comes out, I'm sure there'll be a lot more information on experience, how you gain experience, who gets experience, and things like that. But from all I know, what you do is when you kill a monster, you're able to get the experience points for it. I'm going to say since Joan was the last one to actually deal damage to the monster, I believe she would be the one who gains the dog token. Now I've got our second dog to activate, and he's going to come running down. One, two, three four, five, six, yet again, I'm a moron, and <laughs> I didn't set this up right at all, and he's going to go ahead and hit him. Now again, we get a light blue, a light yellow, and now we get a light green die, along with Maddox's tan die, so hopefully this dog does equally as well as the last one. All right, dog, I hope you do as bad as the last guy did. Oh, you did not, you, oh my goodness, this dog did absolutely fantastic, that's no good at all. All right, so if we look at our dog, he's right here. He needs an agility value, we have an agility value of one. So we got hit. This is good enough for a hit. We take three damage. Oh, that's ridiculous. Since our tan die didn't tan die didn't do anything. Blech. We're gonna take three damage. Now we have to activate one of these special abilities. We have the choice of won't let go or his sna snaggle tooth. According to the rules, we'll always try to do our actual monsters attack first. So he's going to do this won't let go attach one, which means next time he attacks, he doesn't even have to roll dice. He's just going to do damage. So Maddox went ahead and took three damage. That's absolutely terrible. Now on top of that, he's going to gain a cripple token and he's also going to gain an attached token. So I'm going to put those right here with him. Now what the attached token does, like I stated earlier, is if this dog remains adjacent to him, he no longer has to roll to see if he hits. He just rolls his yellow attack die and does damage. And the crippled status effect is, well, he can't move. Maddox can't move. Now, if anybody else can either A, kill the dog, or B, g g make the dog move back or something like through a stumble of some sort, then we can remove the attached and crippled statuses. It's kind of like the dog's like holding onto his leg and he's not able to get away. That's kind of what it's supposed to signify. All right, so my plan to keep Maddox alive is not going so well. <laughs> We're going to have good old dad turn around and he's going to go ahead and take an attack against him. Or should I have her go first? I think I'm going to have her go... F nope, we're going to have dad go. Dad's the plan. Dad's got a good plan. He's going to go ahead and attack him. All right, let's see what he can do. So our dad's going to go ahead and gain a couple light green dice. He's also going to gain that light orange die. Now, of course, our dog is going to gain that tan die. All right, we're going to go ahead and roll these up. Now, like I said in the past video, I was thinking about not showing you what dice we're going to be using, but I think it actually benefits to know exactly where everything's coming from. Again, leave in the comments below if you're not a big fan of this, and I'll stop doing it. All right, let's go ahead. Come on, Bill. I got four. That's Oh, we got him. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, look at this die rolls. These are awesome. Way to go, Bill. Bill did four damage to that dog. He only had one agility, so we hit him for four. So a monstrous hit for four, and actually, I forgot, I was supposed to be using my dark orange die. I didn't even use the right die, but I still got a four, I'll take it. We're going to go ahead and kill this guy because he only had four hit points left. So if we remove all these tokens and we return our targeting token back to where it's whiz, we're going to go ahead and just put our monster back up there and get rid of these, what is this, snaggle tooth. Let's get rid of that too. We're going to put this onto Bill's card, but we don't have to because that's the end. So what we are going to do, though, is we're going to move Bill up one bonus die. Now, of course, potentially Joan would have gotten one as well. The other thing I didn't do for Joan was since she killed that dog, but not really. The dog died from bleed. I'm not going to give her any bonus dice. She's going to just be normal where she is. Now, if she would have killed that dog flat out, she would have got the bonus die. But since bleed is the thing that killed it, I don't believe she's going to gain any extra bonuses. And since we did kill one group of monsters, we get one draw from the drop deck. Are you kidding me? More bucks? <laughs> I got more bucks. All right, we're going to go ahead and put that back in and shuffle it up a little bit. All right, so we've gotten bucks. Lots, man, we'd be the richest family on the planet if we had the if we had some place to go spend all this money. All right, we're going to continue on now. Now, our objective card here states, find the door to the basement. During the drawing phase, draw the locked door token. Okay, we did that. During the spawning phase on the map tile for which the token was drawn, add a locked door standee to a wall without a doorway. Oh, that's my fault. I should have put it like over here in a wall without a doorway. All right, that's my fault. Complete the spawning phase or fighting phase if applicable. Oh, I really kind of screwed this up a little bit. I apologize. Since this was supposed to be on a non... It wasn't supposed to be down here. It was supposed to be over here. 
And with that's the case, I should have probably spawned another tile because I have a door that doesn't actually have a door token on it. We're going to go without that. That's my fault. I misunderstood what was going on here. Now it says complete the spawning phase or fighting phase if applicable. And we're going to go to complete. We're just going to keep on moving. All right, it says objective complete. There! Avalon points toward the door with the to the fungeon scratched into it. We're coming for you, bro! Discard and read objective two. All right, we're going to go ahead and read objective two. And this time we're going to read it so I know what's going on. Open the door to the basement. We probably did this too already. End an exploration phase with at least one family member adjacent to the door to the basement. Read story 1.2. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our exploration phase. Well, I'm actually going to put this over here, I guess, because I don't really know what else to do. We're going to go over here. These guys are going to go over here. There we go. That's perfect. We're going to put all our guys right here. We are now adjacent to our door, our locked door. And we're going to go read story 1-2. Story 1-2. From beyond the door, the family hears strange, unaccounted for sounds. Muffled chanting and even faint giggling. But the door won't budge. Even after several solid kicks to the door handle. Footsteps and shuffling from the floor above draws each of their attention. There's only one way to go, Jones says while looking at the ceiling. Hold on a little longer, sweetie. We will be back for you. The family turns away from the basement door. Two disheveled men barge into the room. They're hurt, grunts the less ugly one. The family nervously clutches their crude weapons and exchange glances. A quick nod is shared as they charge into battle to save Richie. All right, so we've gone ahead and read story 1-2, so that is complete. Let's flip our card. Objective complete. Spawn two lackeys in this map tile adjacent to the doorway from which the family entered the room. Oh, that's fantastic. Discard and read objective three. All right, so we're going to have to grab the lackey card out of here, and we'll put it right there. All right, now we also have to draw a couple of these humanish weapons. So we're going to mix these up again, and we're going to draw a couple of what we find here. All right, let's see what we get. We get this one, and we get this one. Okay, our two guys. One of them has a, what's this, a thick hunter's coat. Oh, this is going to be a bunch of garbage. <laughs> All right, we've got it. He gets an extra die and he gets an extra defense die. Oh, that's going to be terrible. It's going to be so hard to hit that guy. All right, our next guy gets, oh, he gets another broken mop handle, a cracked mop. All right, that's not too bad, but they've got six health each. So our top guy gets these six here, and this guy is going to have these six. Now we have to figure out who they're going to fight. All right, so I'll mix up our tokens again. We'll see our first lackey is going after Evelyn. Oh, terrible. All right, and our second one is going to go after, we'll take this one right here, Joan. All right, that's not too bad. All right, we're going to go deal with that. So the lackey with the coat is going to be going after Evelyn, and this one's going to be going after Joan. Now, they also spawn right back here. So we're going to put number one there, and we're going to put number two right next to him. Okay, we're going to have to deal with this. So now that we have completed this part of it, it says discard and read objective three. So objective three says defeat all monsters. All right, so we just have to go ahead and defeat these two lackeys. Now, since we're going into a new combat, I'm going to go ahead and do my pre-combat stuff. So Joan's pre-combat action is she's going to go ahead and use her family power, and she's going to go ahead and try to heal Maddox. So she's going to roll a light green die and add one. She got nothing. All right, so Maddox gains one extra hit point. He is at three. Maddox is also going to use a family point for his pre-fight action to make a firework here. So he's going to pay off one of his things, and he's going to grab a firework token and put it right on the bottle rocket. Bill's pre-fight action is also going to be to use his family power. I'm just using all these family powers because I did not expect this to happen. And I am going to use his power that says fatherly protector. It says, give this card to an adjacent family member until the end of the round. They gain brown defense dice. We're going to give this again to Maddox. And last but not least, we have Evelyn. She's just cranking up these dice. She's going to grab another one of these dice because she hasn't had to put them down yet because she hasn't actually gone for a long time. We're actually going to hopefully go to town with this character on one of them. Our first character that's going to go is going to be Evelyn. She's actually just going to move. Actually, I don't think she's going to move at all. She's going to fire. One, two, three. And then her accuracy is one, so four. She could go ahead and fire at one of these. I think she's going to fire at the one that's actually planning to hit her. 
Evelyn's gonna grab an absolute massive amount of dice. She gets a blue die, she gets three light green die, which is the max you can roll for any test. You can't ever roll more than three of a certain color. So she's got three here, a blue one here. She also gets to roll this green die. And on top of that, we're gonna use her special power. And that allows me to roll two light yellow die. Now, of course, this is the tan guy who's wearing the coat. So he's going to go ahead and grab two, or sorry, the lackey that's wearing the coat. So he's going to get two tan dice. The Teenage Rager power states, roll damage die twice, keep the better roll. So that's what we're going to do. We got a whole lot of dice. Now there is one other thing. We are shooting through Maddox. So he, I have to take an obstruction die of a white die. If we see that symbol, this whole thing misses. So that, let's not do that. Okay, here we go. Let's go get him. Evelyn has an absolute massive amount of dice here. We're gonna roll these up and see what happens. Oh, well, we're gonna change target. Okay, at least our attack actually hit, but we're actually gonna be the target. Well, it doesn't matter. We're already the target of the attack. All right, let's go ahead and figure all this out. So if we go ahead and take a look at our slingshot, we're gonna bring all the things that matter into view. First off, let's start here. He has one agility. So we only need to hit with only one die. So we got our one die. That's enough to hit. Now his defense dice are right here. They did nothing. All right, that's fantastic. Now we're gonna go to our damage dice. We got a three and a two. So we're gonna do three damage to this lackey. That's fantastic. We're gonna leave that right there and remove the two. Now we've got three diamonds that we can take care of. Now the first one here says damage two. Oh, that's amazing, except it only works on beastly enemies. Sad, sad. He's not a beastly enemy. He's a humanish enemy. So we can use one to do stumble. Now we can use this other two to do an extra damage. So we actually did four damage to this guy. It's really good. And since we did get the switch target symbol, he would normally switch target to the attacker, but that's already Evelyn. Evelyn did an absolutely fantastic job. She knocked this guy down four health. So he's at two left. And we also are gonna have to cause him to stumble once. We're gonna have him move back one. I think he's still gonna be able to get to us, which is gonna be sad, sad, but there's nothing more I can do. Also, now that she's made her attack, we're gonna go ahead and lose all those extra dice. Now we're gonna move into our lackeys phase. And the first person to go is going to be the one that we just smashed really bad, five speed. He's gonna go one, two, three, four, and that's gonna be enough to get to Evelyn. And this one, I should go ahead and roll his dice, but we're gonna do both these at the same time because they're both gonna get to their characters. One, two, and he can go and attack diagonally to Joan. So we're gonna go ahead and roll against Evelyn, and then we're gonna go ahead and roll against Joan. Now, of course, our lackey is gonna gain a yellow, two light greens, and then he's also gonna grab another light green. Now, our other lackey is gonna be rolling the same because he's got a cracked mop. So both these lackeys are gonna be rolling these dice. Evelyn only gets a white defense die, but we're gonna make sure to give Joan our brown defense die. What am I thinking? This wasn't supposed to go to Max. It was supposed to go to Evelyn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I bet everybody's wondering what I did when I gave this to Maddox. All right, so he gets all these dice and I get this one white die because apparently I'm a failure at tactics. At least I know not to start a land war with Russia in the winter. <laughs> at least that's one tactic I know. All right, let's see how we do. Oh, wow, look at that. This attack flat out missed. That was absolutely amazing. All right, so yeah, all three, no matter how many times this person hits, he actually flat out missed because of that white X die. Oh, way to go, Evelyn. I guess I knew what I was doing by giving that brown die to Maddox. No, not really. <laughs> now we're just gonna go ahead and replace this die with our tan die, and now we're gonna go ahead and make our attack roll against Joan. Now, sadly, this die, I know, does not have one of those X numbers, but that'd be fantastic if it did. It does have a dodge, though, but sadly, it's not enough. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring in our lackey and see what happens. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna be good. So if we look at our lackey here, we've got an agility of one. So our dodge is gonna go ahead and remove one of these hits. Sadly, he's still hit. All right, so we got hit. We're gonna take two damage. And he only has one diamond and he can't actually activate anything with one diamond. First off, this takes two and second off, this does not do anything. So we're gonna go ahead and Joan's just gonna take two damage and she also is gonna take this stumble one, but there's no place to stumble, so I guess she's just gonna hang out. So let's go take care of that. All right, Joan took two damage. I'm not a big fan of that, so she's down to three. I'm gonna have Joan go now. And what she's gonna do is first, she is gonna use her nurse power where I'm gonna roll a light green die and I'm actually gonna go ahead and heal myself 
because I don't like where she's sitting with three damage. So we're gonna roll our light green die and gain one plus however many symbols there are in the death. I got one symbol. So she's gonna heal herself two. So she's back to five health. That's a little bit more manageable. Now she's gonna go ahead and hit that guy. So she's gonna gain a light green die, a light, gr or sorry, a green die, and she's gonna gain a yellow die, a dark yellow die here. Now she isn't gonna get any of her extra bonus dice because she doesn't have any. So Joan is gonna go ahead, like I said, and hit this one. So he's just gonna grab one tan die. It's not the guy that she hit before. So he's gonna grab his tan die and we're gonna hit number two. All right, so we've got our dice and we've got his tan die. Let's see how it goes. Oh, oh no, it doesn't go well at all because he was able to dodge our attack. So all the rest of this doesn't happen. Oh, that makes me sad. Dear old dad is gonna go next and he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and he's gonna turn around and hit this guy in the back. So dad's gonna grab a light green die, another light green guy, and he actually gets a dark orange die because he is hitting this guy from the back. So we're gonna go ahead and roll these three dice, but of course that guy is the evil man who has two tan defense dice. All right, we got all these dice. Come on, good old dad. Oops, I dropped it out of the tray. Let's get him. Oh, we didn't do anything. <laughs> He dodged and we didn't even get any hits. Look at that, four damage would have actually killed him. Oh well, we missed with him as well. Now the only person we have left is Maddox. And Maddox, is, I guess, is gonna go one, two, three, four back here. And he's gonna fire off this bottle rocket, which means it's only gonna hit somebody randomly. I'm kind of hoping it hits him, but I got a 50-50 chance on that. And it also is immune to obstruction penalties. So that means I'm not gonna have to roll that white die because I'll be shooting through the dad if I'm going after this guy. But first, we have to determine who this bottle rocket's actually firing at. So even, odd, let's see how this goes. Even, it's going at this guy. Well, I hope it does a lot of damage then. So if we look at our bottle rocket card, we're gonna grab, I'm just gonna put it right here, a light green, a light blue, and we also get a green die for being Maddox himself. And then on top of that, we're gonna gain another light green die from that token. And that's it. Oh, we also get our dark yellow die. And sadly, if this would have been, if I would have positioned, position, if I would have positioned, if I could talk, if I would have positioned him better, I could have got an orange die, but I failed to. Now, we also are going to have to deal with our guy's defense, and he has just one tan die. All right, so there's a lot of dice going on here. Come on, let's do something good. Oh, we did something really good. So if we grab our firework card here, oh, this is going to be fantastic. We need to look at our dice, and we need to be very excited. Okay, so first off, our defense dice and our blue die did not work, not a big deal. They have one agility, so this one is enough to hit him. We hit him, we did three damage, that's fantastic. All right, and next we get to do, see if we're able to do any of our extra things here. We do have one here and it says pierce one. So that actually isn't gonna affect anything. It would ignore, it would go through one defense, but since he didn't roll any defense, he rolled absolutely blanko. We're gonna go ahead and take three damage to this guy plus our bottle rocket does an extra one. So we've done four damage to that lackey. So that bottle rocket did four damage. We're gonna go ahead and give him one damage left there. He's down to two. Now we're also gonna have to roll our die for the end of the round to see if anything happens to our guys. Okay, good, nothing. Wow, that was really close again. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go figure out who's gonna go first in the next round. And the winner is gonna be Dad. Bill is gonna go ahead and crack this guy in the back. I think that's my best bet. All right, so Dad's gonna get two light green and a dark orange die. And sadly, our <laughs> evil lackey's gonna get two brown die. So we're gonna roll these up and see how it goes. Come on, Bill. Oh, Bill, you did it. Oh, Bill, 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 you did fantastic. Okay, here we go. So if we look at his wonderful club here, he is going to have to hit with one because of the agility. So we hit him. We did two damage and we're able to do an extra die. So technically I think we can do three damage to him, but that's enough, he only need to do two. He would have changed his target to Bill, but he's dead. So he's not gonna change his target to anybody. Bill did absolutely great. He killed off this first lackey. So we're gonna go ahead and put this over here. Evelyn's token is gonna be put back in the pool. And on top of that, he's gonna take this standee and he's going to gain an extra bonus die for killing a monster. Now, of course, it's gonna be our monster's turn and our monster wants to hit Joan. So he's gonna go ahead and attack Joan. He's gonna gain three green, light green die, a yellow die, 
and she has a brown dye. If we look at his card, it's, sorry, it's a little out of picture there. I'll, I'll zoop, go down a little bit. Light green, light green, light yellow, and then he gets a light green for his cracked mop. All right, let's see how this goes. Hopefully Joan can hold up. All right, here's our lackey's die. Hopefully it doesn't do too much. He didn't do anything. All right, good. So here's, yeah, he missed. He didn't get any hits, and even he would have he done zero damage, and her defense died not do anything anyway. I'm going to have Joan go next, and again, she's going to use another family point. Well, I might have to get some of these back somehow. At least I've got these orange juices. They can heal back some of these family points. She's going to use her Nurse of Life again to roll a light green die and gain one plus the number shown, and we're going to go heal Maddox up there. So she got two, so that will fully heal Maddox. I lied. It actually doesn't fully heal Maddox. It brings him to five, though. He normally has six. She's now going to go ahead and try to hit this guy. She gets a dark yellow die, a light green die, a green die, and then he also gets a defense die. That die is not supposed to be here. All right, so we're going to roll these up and hopefully take this guy out. So we've got our four dice. Three, three of them are mine. One is his. Let's see what we can do. We hit him, but we only did one damage. We need to do two. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, I think we're still going to get him. We've got our baseball bat. So he has an agility of one, so our one star is enough to kill him. Or hit him, sorry. We did one damage, but he also gets a diamond here. I'm going to turn that into a damage. That's two damage. That's enough to take down our last lackey. All right, so our lackeys go down. That's the last of them. So we're going to go ahead and put our humanish card back up here and put this back in the monster deck. And we're going to remove all our tokens. Now, she would go ahead and gain this standee, but we're not really keeping track of experience. She is going to gain that extra bonus die. Now, since that wasn't a monster token, I don't believe I get anything from the drop deck, and that's okay. We're going to continue going. We're going to see what happens after we complete our next objective. The objective we had to do was defeat all monsters, and we sure did that. So we're going to go to complete, see what it says here. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of things. Read story 1-3, then shuffle map token 8A into the remaining map tokens. Then we're supposed to shuffle in a large rat trap, door token, surprise event token, into the remaining fate tokens. Lots of text over here. If there are two or more stacks of map and fate tokens, aka there was a fork in the road, combine map tokens and shuffle in 8A. Combine fate tokens and shuffle in the three new fate tokens. Evenly split stacks and place them back into their original positions by door standees maintaining a one to three ratio per set of map and fate tokens for details see the rules reference to b discard and read objective four all right there's a lot going on first off we have not found any forks in the road what they mean by that is if you might find a tile that has multiple exits and if that's the case you would divide these tokens up evenly amongst the two different exits and you would divide these in a three to one ratio for each map token. So if, as you can tell, they have exactly three fate tokens per map tile token. So that's how you would do that. We haven't had to deal with that. We haven't found a fork in the road yet. So all of this stuff doesn't matter to us. What really matters is all this stuff. So we have to read story mode one three, shuffle map token A into the remaining tokens. So I'm gonna do that first. I lied. I'm going to do this in order. We're going to start with read the story moment. That's probably the best way to do it because then we'd understand why we're doing all this other stuff. Story 1.3. Quick, take their weapons, Bill exhaustingly demands as he wipes the sweat from his brow. Careful though, make sure you don't poke yourself. As Bill picks up one of the crude cracked weapons, his hands slowly begin to twitch, then vibrate, then shake violently until it clanks back to the ground. Bill looks at his hand, stunned. Dad, I wouldn't touch anything else these people have handled, Evelyn says. Now come on, Richie needs us. All right, so first we're going to tape our map token A. We're just going to mix them up into here and spread them all around and see, pick them all back up and put them back over here. Then we're going to go ahead and take our three other ones, which is the surprise token, the, or not the surprise token, sorry, the, uh, yeah, surprise event token. <laughs> That's what it's called. All right, a door token, and we're going to take our rat thing, and we're going to mix all these up and put them over here. I'm going to do this off camera. It's quite a big stack. We're going to put those right there. Now we're going to go ahead and discard this and read objective four. So objective four now states that we must find the staircase 8A. All right, so during the drawing phase, draw 8A. Place map tile with the staircase orientated opposite from the family members. Draw three fate tokens as normal for map tile 8A. However, 
only spawn treasure tokens and trap tokens as directed and discard the rest. Okay, add the door standee to the new doorway. During an explore phase, place family members in the first row of 8A adjacent to the doorway from which you entered and then it is complete. So we have to find map tile or map token 8A. The tension's heating up. Let's see what map token I get. I'll have to wait till the next video. Oh, I'm leaving you in so much suspense. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like, hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the bell symbol and you'll know what's behind this map token right here. Please leave anything in the comments below. I'm pretty psyched about this game. We're doing really well. We're hopefully gonna be getting into the next objective. I love how this game just kind of keeps on moving. What do you think of the game so far? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. And don't forget, if this is during the Kickstarter, go ahead and hit this little symbol up here if it's still there, and it'll send you to the Kickstarter page. Otherwise, if you want more information on this game, in the description below is a link to not only Board Game Geek, but to the actual website of the game. Again, thank you so much for watching. Will our family members find the staircase and save Richie? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table.